and gentlemen, bout number eight, senior lightweight, three two-minute rounds. In the red corner, Gavin Reese, Newbridge ABC. Former WBA super lightweight world champion Gavin Rees was brought up in the small town of Newbridge in the South Wales Valleys. At the age of nine, his grandfather brought him to the local boxing gym when he first met a charismatic boxing trainer called Enzo Calzaghi. Tommy, shout out! I want to be a champion! Let me hear you! No, it's not good enough! I want to be Chris Eubank, Nigel Benn, Frank Brindle, all on Trestle TV as it was and all these Sky Channels and all the loads. So I just watched it one night and said, I'd like to go and have a go at that. So we joined the gym down Newbridge, one mile away from the bottom of the Pantel. And then I just went from there and Bam took me down. And then we were walking in the first day with Bradley Price and his brothers all skipping along the side. A bit nerve wracking when we first joined the gym, like, ah, I'll see, there's no, no social media, that's who we sort of knew who they was. And then we become best friends with the men, I know, a couple of months, you know, and then. We were, we were travelled everywhere, all over the country, we were in British finals together, internationals, and we had a little family down here to be honest, and then obviously Joe was a lot of a few years older than us, he was obviously towards the end of his amateur career to be honest when we joined. But no, it was a brilliant gym, brilliant outing to be involved in, it was a family to be honest, so very good. Gavin's trainer Enzo Calzaghi, who would later go on to become the Ring Magazine Trainer of the Year, made sure no corners were cut during training. We I mean, our, our trainer, you know, push you to the limits. And he would push the limits and I still wasn't going to wanted a bit extra all the time. But you know, it's got the best out of all us boys. We're the fittest boys around years ago. We were going to town, um, 11, 12, 13, we'd be running from my, my house up here, meeting him at his house every Saturday morning. And he'd run with us. We'd probably run six, seven, eight miles at a young age. And we were supremely fit. Gavin also trained alongside Enzo's son, Joe Calzaghi. Went on to become one of British boxing's greatest ever fighters. Famous Joe Calzaghi was brilliant. You know, we was also on little nippers, like from 10, 11, 12, and going for the British. Now he was obviously winning all the British titles, didn't he? He was, um, I'm not sure what he won. I think he won three or four um, different weights, didn't he? And then we was all looking up and down, wanted to be like that. You know, he's phenomenal to be around. The hardest trainer you could ever imagine. <laughs> you go for a run, you'd be gone straight away. You know, <laughs> well, he's obviously only nippers, but ever, ever athlete, right way through, um, right through all the years training with him. At just five foot four, Garvin had to overcome a height and reach disadvantage in most of his fights. I've always been short. I've always been that, and like I say, I got brought up in the cars. I always spawned the boys like Bradley Price. And then when you do that every day and day out, every every week, and for, for I think it's probably about for 20 years, you learn other style you need to be bobbing your head and underneath. And what you got to do is getting close. If you do it day in and out in sparring, it, it comes to style, you know. Like for 20 years, I was always in that same situation against when I was a little tiny kid against the boys. So you learn out the time, it's all about timing and speed. Goes to in the red corner, Gavin Reese, Newbridge ABC. A split in the Welsh Amateur Boxing Association forced Gavin to turn professional at a very young age. I turned professional at the age of 18, straight after the Welsh, because back in Wales, in, back in, um, oh, must have been in 1998, was it? It was a federation that brought away from the ABAs. So if we won the Welsh, I think the last four or five years I won the Welsh. There was no British to go to. There was no one left in Wales for me to box. I beat them all and no one wanted to box me. So I think after 16, I think I only boxed once. So there was no option for me and just uh, sit, on, uh, sit on the sideline or to go pro and went pro. Enzo Calzaghi made sure Garvin was in great shape when he challenged Salomon Mumbai for the WBA world title in July 2007. We went over to Sardinia, I think, for about two weeks. Me, Bradley, I'm sure it was uh, Bradley Price, Kerry Hope, and Nathan Cleverly were in a little training camp over there. And so I was running up and down the beach, shining the day, training in the afternoons. It was very hard, very hot. But um, got me in peak condition, you know, went out there. And I, after eight rounds, I knew I'd won the fight, you know, I flew out the front of that, the block straight rounds, so I caught him unguarded. And then just caused it to a nice win then, didn't I, to be honest? I actually won the fight quite, uh, quite easily. But Gavin's reign as world champion was short-lived and he lost his world title to Andres Katelnik in his first defence. 27 now, thought I was unbeatable, probably drinking too much, bad diet, and just totally let myself down, myself and Enzo Calzaghi in the real gym down now. Didn't train properly, thought he was unbeatable. And a lot of people get a hype job like that, they think, they think yeah, I'm going to put the hard work in. You know, I'd, I'd won it all and done it and then it's come unstuck to be honest.